Let's talk about Video Boost, one of the latest AI enhancement features available for the Pixel 9 series and it's there to enhance our videos. But there are a lot of caveats guys and in this video I'm gonna do a full review of videos with Video Boost on Video Boost Off. I'm gonna give you the essentials, I'm gonna tell you all about the limitations because there are a lot of limitations. Starting with the main thing, this is a feature that really works off device, which means that when you use it, what is gonna happen is your phone is going to upload the video to the Google servers, they will process, enhance it, colors, saturation, stability, and then you're gonna get an enhanced version of your video. And one of the biggest limitations is on the 8K30, because this only works with the video boost on, which means that with the Pixel 9 Pro XL, you're not able to shoot 8K30 just like that. You're actually shooting a 4K video that goes back to Google servers and then is upscale. So, let's take a brief look at what Google are saying. Ever jumped in the excitement of your child's go and you didn't have time to get your video focus? What can you do when their almost perfect video is ruined by shaky footage or a blurry background? Luckily, that's exactly the kind of problem Video Boost was created to solve. So, a huge ambition to deal with shakiness of the video, but not only. Let's keep reading. One of the new Pixel AI video editing features in the Pro Controls Video Boost allows you to easily edit shaky, grainy, poorly lit and otherwise imperfect videos, which really sounds like a huge win. And Video Boost works seamlessly with other features on Pixel Pro phones like the night side video, super red zoom video and etc. So, how does Video Boost work? The Google Tensor chip in your Pixel Pro does a video, reducing the background noise and improving your lighting. Your Pixel saves the original video on the device and sends a new version to the cloud where you can access it. Next, your phone's AI software automatically removes any graininess, stabilizes movement and adjusts exposure to create beyond stunning HDR videos, including those in 8K, which already sounds like a very nice statement to have and Google Dine are also sharing some examples on how this looks and this really looks amazing in the presentation but we need to check if this is also the reality when you're recording in daylight video boost uses the ai processing to balance light while improving the colors and contrast we can also use it during the day but the best gains apparently are in low light before video boost sharp videos and low light tricky the result was often grainy faces jumbled shadows and annoying streaks and this used to happen with some people that were using the Pixel 8 Pro. Now with the Video Boost, yeah, you can boost everything. Better dynamic range, less noise in the darker areas, more details and less grayness. And honestly, this all sounds great. My only remark is, this should have happened directly with the latest camera in the Pixel 9 Pro XL and not really off device. But okay, let's also take a look here. How do you use the video boost, all right? So you can just go into Pro Controls, enable it. What happens, because guys, this is very important and not a lot of people are mentioning this. When you record a video, your phone stores it as a temporary video file. Video boost uses this file to create a boosted video. The file size can vary based on what you record, frame rate and resolution. So while the temporary video file has been boosted, it doesn't use up your Google Photo storage. However, you might notice that temporary file can take up available storage space. But I do believe this introduction is enough, so now let me show you the real footage and please let me know what you think down below in the comments. Is really Video Boost that great? Please buckle up and let's enjoy the video. This right now here is the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL, guys, 4K 60 FPS. And I want to settle this discussion about a video boost. So this here is almost pitch dark. And this is the video without the video boost. So I'm going to do the ultra white. Oh, all right, lost focus for a moment. 1x, 2x to 5x. All right, and you probably go and do the maximum, which is 20x. All right, let me go back to the 1x. So this is the video without the video boost and now I'm going to switch the video boost on. This here is the video with the video boost. So let me do again the same thing. But I cannot because I only can go from 1x to 2x and then to 5x. So this is the direct comparison, the video boost off on the left and the video boost on on the right. And for sure we can see improved footage here. So there is absolutely less noise in those darker area in the shadows. Also, the video is not so grainy. It is also more stable, but there are the limitations with it. You cannot use the ultra wide. Let's repeat this. This here is again 4K 60 FPS. 
shot on the 1x, 2x, 5x, going back to 2 and 1x. This is without the video boost. Okay, the same video starting at 1x with the video boost on. Let me do 2, 5x, going back to 1x. And this here is the direct comparison. Again, the video boost off footage on the left and the video boost footage on is on the right. But we can still see that in this scenario where we have more light, the video is still shaky and also grainy. So here, video boost didn't really deliver a better job so much compared to the original. One more time, 4K 60 FPS, 1X with video boost. You cannot use the ultra wide. And also it doesn't really work on the front camera. So now let me turn video boost on. All right, and this is now the video with the video boost. I can already tell it's artificially stabilized. This is the video with the video boost. I'm gonna keep switching, guys, and you'll let me know down in the comments if you really think that the video boost makes such a huge difference. Remember, video boost is on right now. All right, back to 4K60 without the video boost. And I'm also gonna go in a darker area for you to be able to assess what happens. Let me also initiate a run. So running with 4K60 without a video boost. Now with the video boost, why let's go here. Video boost is on guys. Let me take a close shot. Not a lot of things are to be seen. Video boost is off right now. So let me do a slow pan for you. Okay. And now the same pan, but with the video boost on. And you let me know what you think down below in the comments. In very dark areas, video boost for sure has an advantage. Again, the dynamic range is even better, noise is less. Also, the video is not so grainy, but where there is more light involved, it's not so great. And we can see it from here, even with the video boost on, the video is shaky. We do have to consider also all the limitations. So for starters, this thing doesn't really work on your device. If video boost function was directly implemented, it would have been better, but no. So you have to upload the videos to Google and you have to wait a lot. Yesterday, I had to wait hours for just four videos. Also, you cannot use the ultra wide camera. So all of these limitations with the fact that you have to wait hours sometimes to just get a video ready, are making this experience not so pleasant. It would have been perfect if Google implemented this directly on the device, but sadly this is not the case. Anyway, there are clear advantages, so if you want to boost up your videos, you can still do that. And yeah, let me know what you think down below in the comments, and thank you so much for watching. VST over, and bye.